Now, President Putin has met President Xi at the BRICS summit, calling the Chinese leader a dear friend. Vladimir Putin has been welcoming delegations from more than 30 countries as Russia hosts a summit of emerging economies. But on China, Vladimir Putin said the two countries should work together to create what he called a just world order. Mr Xi told Putin the world is undergoing profound changes unseen in a century and the international situation is chaotic and intertwined. Well, President Putin has already met India's Prime Minister, Narendra Modi, but let's examine in more detail what the BRICS group is all about. It stands for Brazil, Russia, India, China and South Africa and is often referred to as a counterweight to the Western-led world. It has expanded to include Egypt, Ethiopia, Iran and the United Arab Emirates. Saudi Arabia has also been invited to join. The BRICS nations, as a group, account for 45 per cent of the global population and their economic weight is significant. Their economies are worth more than $28.5 trillion. And that corresponds to 28% of the global economy, which has led its members to claim that BRICS represents the global majority. Well, Chris Weaver is a CEO of Media Advisory, a strategic consultancy firm which focuses on trends in Eurasia. He says that by simply hosting the large BRICS summit, it is a win for the Kremlin. But it's very much a statement saying, look, I'm still standing. Uh, we're still here. We're still relevant. So, you know, Putin uh, certainly sees this summit uh, primarily uh, as something he can show to a domestic audience, to, you know, the Russian elites, the Russian people that, you know, that Russia has not been isolated, it has not been, you know, pushed aside in the global community, it's still relevant. Uh, and, and secondly, of course, it, yeah, on a more practical sense, uh, he wants to use this summit to progress this, uh, the, uh, the objective of creating an alternative global trade system uh, beyond the use of the dollar and SWIFT uh, so that it can be uh, uh, more sanctions proof, as it were. So, yeah. Uh, I, and I is that idea go, likely to get traction, do you think, or not? Yeah, you no, know, it is because uh, it is something that has been discussed by other countries. Uh, China certainly has been very keen on it. Uh, there is no. Uh, kind of decision as to exactly what this would look like. It is not a BRICS currency, so you're not looking at a new dollar, a new euro, or anything like that. It is just it is a a, a system where a cross border trade between two BRICS countries can be settled uh, bilaterally without using the global system. So China has already testing its version of this called the Embridge. They they have, for example, uh, made several transactions with the United Arab Emirates, another BRICS country. Russia has got some proposals of enhancing this using digital currencies. Yeah. But in general, yes, they all, all the member countries say they favor creating this kind of alternative settlement system in order to boost trade between the, the countries. A final twin thought then. How much do you think it represents a threat to the G20? And also, what else, apart from what you've mentioned about currency, does Moscow want in practical terms from a summit like this? And what do you think those other BRIC nations want from it? Yes, no, I, I think the G20's days are numbered. If, if BRICS does develop and it adds more members, then I, I, don't, I don't see the relevance of G20 in, in the future. The, the way Moscow and Beijing, of course, have been presenting the BRICS to uh, members and to potential member countries is that it can properly represent their interests in the world, uh, in other words, against the uh, the dominance of the G7 as they see it. And, and they dismiss the G20 because they see it has already been gazumped by the G7. So very much uh, uh, and the narrative of this can represent the interests of, of everybody else. And that's what they're they're looking to, to do from. But uh, Russia and China, they've been very careful to avoid any kind of uh, overtly political narrative. It's not been critical of the US that that would make a lot of countries very uncomfortable. Uh, it's not talking about shunning the dollar or, or, or in any way kind of shunning trade with the West. Again, that that would make countries like India and others very uncomfortable. Moscow wants to increase the membership of, of this group in order to create a, a much bigger uh, base of countries that are not part of the G7 and for which then it, it, it can have more credibility in the world and, and expand its trade without yeah. having to look over the shoulder at the dollar or, or sanctions.